Hello, Internet. So this is Unity 2018. Uh, this is the beta that was released earlier today. And I just wanted to kind of walk through one of the new features that is coming in Unity 2018 that I thought was really cool. Uh, and that is the shader editor. They're adding a visual shader editor, editor to Unity. Uh, and actually, all three of these are demos created by Unity as part of that. So all three of these shaders, this is all done in shaders, they're all done procedurally using a visual editor. There is no code here. It's all done, well, I'll, I guess I can show you. So this is the basic shader. It's called the, the oilish shader. And if we go here, if I click on the shader, you see there's no uh, edit the code. Instead, we get an open shader editor option. So there's a specific, currently this project is the only one that supports the shader editor. If you just download the beta, it's not going to be there. I'll put a link to this project so you can go and grab that. Uh, and there's some more information in their release. But basically all you have to do is click open shader to editor and you get this. So if you're familiar with Unity's animator or anything like that, where you've done the node editing, this should look fairly familiar, but really, this is a full shader editor. So I can zoom in. Uh, that's another new feature they added. And you can kind of see what's going on here. So they're taking some inputs and doing a whole bunch of stuff. And then at the end, they get this fun animation and then plug it into their PBR master. And that's the output. So really, all you need to do is set, set up a bunch of nodes, input them here, and then that's your shader output. And then Unity will figure out all the code you actually need to get that to work. Which means for a majority of shaders, this is all you need. You don't actually need to know any of the code. You don't really need to know how they work. You can create your own shaders pretty much from scratch. Uh, and that's really cool. Uh, so what I wanted to kind of do is just kind of explore this a little bit. I'm hoping we can do sort of a, like a lava or a water type shader. So there will be some rocks and then uh, there will be a water level underneath that. I don't really know if that's going to work, but if you want to create one of these shaders, you go to create and a shader graph. That's it. We're going to call this a uh, test shader. Uh, don't really know what we're going to end up with, so we're just going to make up a name and we'll rename it later. This is all you get. It's just a really basic shader. All it's doing is writing gray to the albedo, and then it's got some normal emission, all of that. It's pretty much all the same stuff you get from a, a the standard shader. You just get to plug in the inputs by doing this. Uh, create node, and then let's say uh, noise. I want some noise here. So if I just take some simple noise, we've got inputs on the left side and outputs on the right side. And so if I just want a shader that does say basic noise, I can do this. But this is kind of boring because the noise doesn't do anything. It's just a single static noise texture. And I can just use a texture for that. Why would I create a shader? What we can do then is say grab time. And now I have the time variable that I would normally grab from a shader. And I can plug that into our UV. Ah, I don't want to do that um, because that doesn't actually create the correct thing. I've made it flash because uh, it's just a single thing. What we actually want is a way. Hmm. So I've never actually used this tool. I should point that out now. I don't really know what I'm doing. And because of that, it can be kind of hard for me to figure out what's going on. That deletes. That's cool. Um, what I'm trying to find is a way to get a 2D vector. I want something that I can plug into this UV and actually use. Uh, because the problem we're running into is time is just a float. I'm stuck in this editor. Keep in mind. Uh, this kind of stuff where like this selection thing is just stuck there. It's a beta. This is kind of expected. It won't be there in the final release, hopefully. Uh, but for now, we just kind of have to deal with this. 
somehow. Can I? Nope. Okay. We're going to just close this, I guess. And we'll, re we'll reopen that. I guess that's just a thing that happens. Uh, so, still don't know how to get a 2D thing. I, I want to be able to plug in time to our X and our Y of our UV independently. And I don't know how to do that. And it doesn't seem like there's an easy way. Maybe I'm missing something, but... Huh. Because none of these, like, they've got a bunch of vector stuff, but it's just vector stuff. It's not actual primitive types. Uh, and that's kind of annoying. Vector 2. See, and then we get a vector 2, but the vector 2 doesn't have an input, so I can't change its x. I can only... I can only output certain things, which makes that less useful. Huh. Yeah, that's annoying, I guess. Like, I can use this to change the scale here. But that doesn't really do what I want. Huh. I don't know. That's too small. So our scale is now fluctuating between 0 and 1, which is way too small for this to even matter. We need to change our UVs because that's what actually is going to change the input of our noise. Problem is, don't know how to do that. <laughs> There's a bunch of options here for pretty much everything you would want, but it doesn't seem like there's an obvious way to create a new type. And that is limiting. <laughs> I think that's the that's the word for it. Uh, so I guess I'm I'm gonna try to find that. It it doesn't seem promising. I don't really know why. I mean I can drag it back that way, but that's again just the same thing. Ah, this is really frustrating. <laughs> Because it seems like something that would be really simple. It's like something that you should just be able to do. But obviously it, it isn't. I'm going to turn get rid of that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to go and figure out how to actually do this. There's not really any documentation on this tool yet uh, because it's, it's just beta. Uh, that was released today. So I'm going to go figure out how to do that and then we'll, we'll pick back up shortly uh, because Otherwise, this is going to be really hard. Okay, um, I've spent the past five minutes trying to figure that out, and I have no idea how to do anything. I, they have a combine function, but it only creates a color. And then that color does the exact same thing. So I don't know what's going on. I thought it would work. It seemed like this was a good, good test, but apparently not. Good news is we can move on and do other things. Uh, we'll just not use simple noise. Uh, so there's a bunch of other things. There's also uh, Vernoy noise, which is gives you these sort of cell structures. And so I can kind of plug that out there. I don't know what the cells output is. Let's stick that on, say, our metallic option. Seems like it's the opposite of uh, the cells. But anyway. There we go, we get sort of a Vernoy noise thing. We can do, say, angle offset, and I should be able to plug time into that, and we'll kind of get everything moving, uh, which sort of just kind of makes it look alive, which I guess even this is something that would have been very, not, it wouldn't have been straightforward in a normal surface shader, which is nice. This is easy, This I can understand this, so cool. Uh, what I'd like to do, though, I wonder if we could do something with this. Uh, let's see here. We have black as sort of the center and then white as the lines. What if the white becomes... Hmm. What does remap do? Uh, not what I want. 
there's got to be some way to take a color color space conversion vertex color replace color color mask let's try this so if I give it an input of our color and the mask don't know what this is going to do but we're going to find out and then plug that into the albedo uh, it just gets rid of everything I don't really know what any of this stuff does uh, so you know we're, we're figuring things out shape uh, color let's go back to that that's not what I want that's just a color input uh, color <laughs> we'll get there eventually color space conversion is going to convert things from one color space to another uh, so for example uh, this won't be interesting but if I take, uh, let's say red, if I take a red color and plug that in to our input here and then output that to our albedo, we have red there, but I can say that red is actually uh, an HSV, which would be hue, saturation, and uh, uh, shoot, what's the third one? I don't remember. I should know uh, it's not volume it's something else but effectively the V stands for how uh, strong the thing is I'm totally blanking on what that actually is you can go look it up but effectively that affects the brightness of the color and then the other one is going to be the saturation so as this goes down now as my green value goes down the saturation goes down the color becomes less saturated which means it just fades out. And then we also have the hue, which will actually shift it. Uh, so if I turn that saturation up, changing this actually shifts it along the entire color scale, which means we'll start at red, and then as we go along, we'll go across the rainbow and get back to red. And so that's sort of something fun you can do there, uh, but it's not really, <laughs> not really what I want. I really just want, like these uh, black bits to be sort of uh, almost like terrain and then sort of lava to kind of show through in the white bits. That's sort of what I'm going for. Don't really know what it, that's we're going to get how we're going to get there, but that's that's what we're going to aim for. Let's grab a set of two textures. Actually, let's do one texture and one color. So the color is going to be the glow from our uh, from our lava and then the texture I don't really know what textures are in this project but we're gonna use a uh, ground cracked sure and so the idea here is I want to take the black and multiply that by our so I want to take this uh, black color and multiply it by our texture, which I can't plug in there. That's annoying. <laughs> um, how do I combine two meshes then? It's all just a learning experience at this point. So uh, <laughs> we'll see. Advanced, absolute. This is a bunch of just basic uh, math operations. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, you can do derivatives, trig, whatever. I don't think that's what we want, though. I feel like I need something that can combine them, but that's not going to get us what we want. Because I want to be able to combine that output. So this output from the Vernoi noise is going to be a float. It's just a single floating point value at each point. And then the texture is actually going to be a color. So I need something that can take a color and multiply it by a fixed value and kind of scale the color. And I don't entirely know how to do that. Color mask. Nope. I don't know. <laughs> We're just kind of figuring things out. 
textures. No, so all, all the input appears to be just inputs. There's no, uh, you can't give any additional input to input values. They're just static constant values. So I don't think that's where we want to be. We want something else. Blend. Nope. There's pretty much every, if you're familiar with Photoshop, it looks like there's pretty much every kind of blend mode, but I can't use them for anything. Short of actually plugging in each color individually, it doesn't appear like there's an easy way to do this. And that's kind of uh, annoying. I don't know. I, I've never really liked these visual shader editors, mostly for this exact reason. It's very hard. It's not intuitive to go from, I want to do this to plug in all of these things. At least I don't, I don't find it to be, I like to kind of, I hopefully maybe you've seen this, but I, I just kind of, uh, I don't know. I have an idea and I kind of just start plugging at it and I have like a, a flow of how things should go. This is a lot harder because it's a lot harder to, you have to actually be able to identify what the thing is you're looking for. And I don't know that just going through all of these without more, it's really hard to do. And so I kind of struggle with that. I don't know adjustments. Contrast to replace color saturation. All of that appears to just be something that uh, I guess mix things so you can add like adjust the saturation independently. You don't need that other color thing. That's a little bit more advanced. So that's adjustments. We've got contrast hue, replace color, saturation, white balance, blend, uh, masks. That might work. We've got a color mask and a channel mask. I think I want a channel mask. Um, what? Hmm. I don't think that's what I wanted. <laughs> Why can't I plug in, if I can select the channel, why can I only plug in a one dimensional thing? Some of this, I, I feel like there's something I'm missing. Like there's some feature that I should be using that just isn't there. And I don't know what it is. It, and maybe it's just because the tool's not done yet. But like here, I would expect to be able to plug in a texture or plug in some sort of color or something like that and be able to extract specific channels from that color or from that texture. That doesn't appear to be possible. And I don't really, sure, we'll convert that to a subgraph. What does that do? Creates another texture or creates another material. Okay. I'm going to get my texture back. <laughs> it, I don't know. It, it seems like there's, there's more to, to do here and like it, it's not quite done. I, I wouldn't use this in production. Um, I wouldn't really use this at all at, at this point, but, um, I think it's, it's moving in the right direction. It's just, I don't know. It's, it's really hard to just wrap my head around it. And I, I guess part of that is, I've never touched it before, but part of that seems to be, um, these menus aren't very good. <laughs> it's really hard to walk through these and I don't know why UV is separated out when there's a whole math thing that does trig and vectors and stuff when that's what the UV is doing. So I don't, I don't know. It's, it just, they just need to work on it a little bit more. It seems. I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling, trying to figure out how the heck I get my texture to work with this, which should, I, I don't know. I was expecting this to be easy. 
Uh, but it isn't. Or I just don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I can grab an ellipse and plug that in. And then we get an ellipse. That's easy to do. I can do that. Uh, but I can't grab this or like grab this and plug this in. I can't even, what? I can't even plug my texture into this output. Hold on. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. How, how, what? I'm really, I'm really not understanding this, that I have to be missing something because that is like the most basic thing ever. Why? Uh-huh. So you get the asset and then you plug that in and then you output that there. Okay. Progress. So apparently you have to take these assets and plug them into a texture sampler, just like you would do in a normal thing. I don't know why you need to do both of these steps in a visual editor. That seems counterintuitive to me, but I don't really know what what's going on. I guess it allows you to give a, a UV input, but you could just add that here. Anyway, gonna ignore that for now. What we should be able to do now is combine these or multiply them. I hope. <laughs> so I should be able to take this now, plug that in there, and plug that in there. And now that's backwards. Let's plug in the other one. Ah, that's not correct either. <laughs> that gives us the cells. This gives us the output but the output we want inverted. So I want all of those black dots to be the terrain and everything else to be our lava, which means we need to invert this. So to do that, we are going to uh, multiply this by a constant. So just take this, multiply it by negative one and output that there. Or not. What? <laughs> Why does multiplying this by negative one give us a black texture? Oh, ha, I know why, because we're, we're going, everything's going negative. What am I doing? Uh, what we actually need to do is add one to this. There might actually be a invert. Uh, inverse lerp, that's not what we want. Doesn't appear like that there's an invert unless flip does that. So let's try this. If I flip it, um, okay, plug that in there. Now if I flip the reds, there we go. Now we have this, which those black lines are where we w are going to want to actually have our, where we actually want our um, glow to be. So this is now our output which looks normal-ish. But now I should be able to multiply this color by our original output. We'll just get this orange. Now I'm gonna plug this into a power function. Uh, and then the, you use power, so if you've ever seen specular colors, you'd use power to achieve specular colors. Uh, and the reason you, the way this works is effectively it scales it. 
So you get sort of a nice scale. Uh, so it's not as it's not as linear. You can kind of see we get these really vivid lines here. And so that's sort of what power does. When it, as it gets lower, power kind of reduces it so it falls off exponentially. It's kind of an exponential curve. And so as it gets closer to one, it stays closer to one. But as it falls off, it becomes less and less dramatic very quickly. And so you kind of get these really nice uh, curves. And it, it's a good way to get your uh, specular lighting if you ever are working with that. So we should be able to plug this into our emission now. And I'm going to delete, oh, that, not that. Going to delete our cells. And now we have these red lines sort of playing across our, <laughs> across our terrain. Uh, we don't really have any input for say normals or anything like that, but that can all be added as well. There's inputs for those. We just need to do similar stuff, but you sort of get the idea, even if I kind of made a mess out of this, uh, but we have a texture we're sending in, grabbing all of that and using the that to kind of manipulate these UVs so that it sort of falls off around there. And then we add a glow around those parts so that they're a little bit brighter. Uh, I think one of the cool things about a visual editor is you can do things like this. I think I want to plug the cells in here and multiply them like that and then multiply them by our color. And by doing this, we'll get a, a more accurate color. It will just appear closer to our input. And so that should be good. We kind of have this nice, I don't know, orange glowy thing. And I should be able to save this now and actually just grab a cube. There we go. If I create a material now, like say our test shader material, I can assign that there, I think. There we go. And then I can plug that onto our text or onto our cube and we get it animated just like normal. And it looks like our texture shows up as an input, but it also looks like I can't change it here. So you'd have to actually go and edit the shader. That seems weird. I don't really know what's going on there, but uh, I think this is sort of <laughs> good enough. It kind of covers the basics of what this is and where it, can, where it can go. It's a little bit confusing still. There's some kinks to be worked up, but it's a beta that's sort of expected. So I think hopefully this kind of makes it easier and more accessible for people with less uh, graphics programming experience or no graphics programming experience to kind of make their own shaders. Hopefully it makes, I don't know, even though we struggled a bit, putting this together wasn't that much work. You didn't really need to know anything about shaders to get this. Uh, and that's sort of cool. So I'll put links to this project so you guys can, well, not this project, but to the Unity project that gives you this uh, graph editor. You guys can go and play with it. You will need to download the Unity 2018 beta, uh, at least huh, if you're watching this now. If you're watching it in the future, it may already be out. But uh, that's it for this video. I don't know, but let me know what you think. I have mixed feelings. I think it could be good, but I don't think it's there yet. Uh, so I'm curious what you guys think. Maybe I missed something, or maybe you guys have ideas on something we could do with this, or if there's other Unity 2018 features you want to explore, let me know in the comments and we can take a look at those as well. Uh, but that's it for this video. So until next time, see internet.